Hey y'all, I have been asked to do a cobbler video, so that's what I'm going to do today. And this cobbler I've done for probably 30 years. It's very popular. I didn't come up with it. I just think it's a very good old-time type cobbler. And uh, I'm going to do peach today. And um, so I'll just show you what I do. I'm going to double the recipe because uh, usually people stop buying stuff and um, like to have some. So I'm using this um, Pyrex dish. I'm going to try and see if I can. It's a two and a half quart. If you don't want to make as much as I'm making, just half the recipe and um, spraying it with Pam. Then I'm going to take butter and I use real butter in this I think it just gives it a much better taste if you use real butter but you don't have to and I'm going to take about half a stick of butter and cut it in pats and put it on the bottom of my dish and then I'm going to stick it in the oven on 375 degrees uh, I want the butter to melt so that when I put the um, the rest of the recipe on it, it will be able to soak it up. So, I have half a stick of butter approximately in pats down there. So, I'm going to go ahead, like I say, and stick it in the oven 375 degrees. Let that be melting. And while it's melting, I'm going to get the rest of the recipe together, and it's so simple. I'm going to go ahead and stick you down here so you can watch. I just have a bowl. Uh, I'm going to take two cups of flour, self-rising flour. That's the only kind of flour, basically, I ever use. If you want to use plain flour, then you have to add salt and baking soda. And I'm not even sure how much of that you add. So, here's one cup. And two cups of flour. And if you're wondering, well, you're probably not wondering because you don't see it, but this big canister with my flour and sugar and all, I got at Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to add equal amounts of sugar. So I'm going to dip that. And this time, usually I use Splenda, but this time I'm going to use real sugar. So here is one cup, and I'm getting the second cup. If you want to add um, one and a half, if you think two cups would be too much, that would be fine. I'm always happy with just uh, equal parts. So there is my sugar and my self-rising flour in the bowl. And I want to take my whisk and just kind of do it around. Mix it together a little bit. And then I'm using 2% milk here. You can use um, whole milk. I wouldn't use skim milk, but uh, equal parts of milk, which would be two cups. So uh, it's very simple. If you only want to make half the recipe, it'd be one cup self-rising flour, one cup of sugar, and one cup of milk. And also, put in a splash of um, 
vanilla. This is probably only one of the few recipes that I actually measure. Um, but it's important to get the amounts correct in this. So I probably should have gotten a bigger bowl. But I didn't, so we'll make this work. And just get that stirred up good. You don't want to stir and stir and stir and overwork it because it'll make your the bread part of your cobbler tough. So, and it's okay for these little lumpy bubbles and stuff like that. That's okay. So I have that stirred up. Now I'm going to take the, um, the um, pan or the casserole dish out of the oven. I'm not sure if the, but yeah, the butter's melted, but if it's not, that's okay. You can just pour your stuff on top of it. But there's that. Now just go ahead and... You don't want to splash yourself, so kind of use a spoon or something there so it doesn't splash up on you. And get all that out. Now, this is another thing that will be completely up to you if you use one can of fruit or two cans or whatever. But I got this large can of peaches at the Dollar Tree. I poured the juice off, and then I took a knife and just left them in there and just kind of cut them up because they were peach halves. And I just cut it up into smaller pieces. But now you just sprinkle that all around. You don't stir it once you get them in here. You just sprinkle them in and leave it. And you know the... Um, the real good, kind of thick, chewy, white that you can find in a cobbler, which is my favorite part of the cobbler. Um, I have found that if I take the juice, which this is the juice from the peaches that were in the can, if I go ahead and just pour that on, I will get that thick, white, um, kind of gummy, chewy um, insides that I love. So I'm going to put this in the oven, 375. I'm going to look at it after about 35 minutes, and I'll see from there how much longer I need to cook it. And uh, you just want it to be golden brown. So, I'll put that on in, and when it's done, I'll come back. So, I'll see you shortly. Alright, everybody, the cobbler's done, and it has set for a while. You know, if you let it sit or rest for a while, it'll hold together better when you uh, cut it. But anyway, I cooked it at 375 for about 45 minutes. And uh, depending on what size cobbler you want, um then that'll be how long it cooks but just uh you'll see how golden brown mine is and you'll want it about like that and if you cook one that's half this size you may want to cook it at 350 instead of 375 but here is the cobbler let's see there it is Gonna cut into it. You see, it's nice and tender, and part of that comes from not overworking your um, your batter. See on the spoon, that's that white um, kind of gooeyness I was talking about, and. Um, 
here it is. There it is with the piece cut. And here is the um, piece I cut for y'all. I wish every one of you could come and join me with a piece of cobbler and a cup of coffee. Here's the other side. And that's it for today. I hope you get a chance to make this. And if you do, let me know if you liked it. Thank y'all for watching. And let me look at you while I tell you bye. And I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.